Could this be the end of white in interior design? Certainly over the last 10 years or so, white interiors, whether in the kitchen or otherwise, has soared in popularity. But there are some rumblings happening out there telling us that perhaps people are starting to get sick of all white interiors. We're gonna get to the bottom of that in today's video. Is white being replaced by another color altogether? Jennifer Ebert from homesandgarden.com did a great article talking just about this. So I wanna go through it with you. And ultimately at the end, I'm gonna give you my opinion on what all of this really means. So I think one of the big reasons why why white became so popular is because of the rise of minimalism. And in terms of design styles, Scandi design, Scandinavian aesthetics. White tends to be very clean and sophisticated feeling. It was kind of great because using it seemed classy, but also pretty simplistic because it's not really a color with big undertones that you have to worry about. It's just gonna work in a lot of situations. The downside though, is the risk of your space looking sterile and kind of lifeless. Because white doesn't have those undertones to sort of work with and play with, you really don't have a space that is expressive creatively. And a lot of the white paint colors that were being used were the super bright ones, colors that didn't really seem all that natural. And now we're starting to see a step away from that to colors that are more off-white, still neutral, but have something else to them. So if white is falling out of favor in interior design, what is replacing it? Believe it or not, it's brown. Now, not chocolate brown or anything like that. I think the real message here though is decorating with brown as the forefront is becoming a little more desired because it gives you some more range to play with where you can have taupes, you can have earthy colors, dark beiges, tans, things of that nature. So essentially we're going away from milk towards chocolate milk. I want to take a deeper dive on this in a second, but let's go through some of the points that this article is laying out. So the first thing is what kind of brown you're going for. There's chocolate browns, there's honey, golden browns, beiges, tans. So there is way more variance, way more variety that you can use within the brown color palette. And you even see here in this living room, dark, dark espresso brown walls, and then this blue ceiling, which is kind of fun. In kitchens, it's pretty obvious how you can use it. You can go with these sort of taupey brown colors painted, or if you have wooden cabinets, you can leave them unpainted or even refinish them with this beautiful stain or varnish. And that's one of the simplest ways to incorporate brown. It's just going with wood because wood, generally speaking, is some level of brown. And one distinction I want to make in the kitchen is we're not going back to the mahogany, dark wood kitchen cabinets from a few years back. It's not quite a flip flop because those were quite popular. If you don't remember about 10, 15 years ago, we're embracing a different kind of brown direction here. I'm not normally a fan of brown bedrooms, but this example is okay. It's a textured wallpaper. It's sort of a darker mid-tone color. It has some texture to it, which gives it some life. Nothing too dark and dismal for me. So wallpaper is a great option as well. Using brown in a dining room, again, you have different levels of brown, that sort of milk chocolatey caramel type of brown on the cabinets, even the tiles. You have that red terracotta, which does have a brown base to it. So a lot of earthy colors, organic, natural feeling. There's nothing natural about white out. When you have super bright white, it is a very unnatural feeling. The trend here is going in that more organic direction, I suppose. Brown in a home office, this one you can go a little more traditional with your dark chocolate browns, I think. Kind of a black bean type of color because offices tend to feel a little more grounded and sophisticated when you use those darker colors. But then you can go with warmer, fun trim as well to sort of bring back some energy so it's not too dark. The word they use here is a cocooning color. I think that's a great, great descriptor. But at the end of the day, what does this all mean? Are we really gonna trade in our art gallery aesthetic, our Scandi vibes, white on white on white everything, and then just go dark brown, like polar opposite? Not necessarily. I sort of see this as a reimagining of what neutral way to go with. Going from Scandi design to Japandi. I think more people are embracing that because Japandi has more flexibility, I feel. There's more color that you can bring in. There's definitely that emphasis on those natural materials like wood. So I think in terms of paint colors, there is quite a few options you can go with within 
the brown color category. Do I still think you can use white on your walls today? Yeah, I do. Even if you wanna lean into what's currently trendy, you can still go with white walls, but maybe just have the furnishings, your floor coverings, your artwork, your display pieces, anything like that within the room, you can bring in those natural materials, bring in some of that brown, bring in those earthy, saturated reds and greens as well. And then I think you're well on your way to being trendy. And not to brag, but instead of going white on my kitchen cabinets in my condo, I went with a color that looked a lot like this one right here, which is almost that butterscotch, milk chocolatey brown color. And if you wanna see what the color looks like on those cabinets, I did a video on them right over here. Why not check it out?